G'day and welcome to our 8 mower restoration videos. There's not many on this, it's a reasonably short sort of series because I've got a lot of car stuff to do as well. Um, so in this one we've stripped all the 8 mowers down, we've gone to hydroblasting, we've got all the bases hydroblasted, we have, we've gone to the powder coater, that stuff won't come back in this chapter because it takes a good week and a half to get that done. And in, uh, it sort of involves um, sandblasting as well. And I don't like sandblasting particularly. Um, I find it much more expensive um, than hydroblasting. And I also find it to be a lot more sort of destructive as well. So I've decided to hydroblast pretty much everything and really clean it up to see what's there. Um, the engines, we've got three 160s and five 125s. And one of those, obviously, is the 18 one, which has a very good bottom end. Um, we'll put new bearings in the others. The one of the 125s is perfect. It's from the mower that we found on the nature strip out from next door. Um, and I know all the history of that motor. It's still got its own pattern. It's got very little wear on it. There's nothing wrong with it at all. And to pull it apart would be futile. And the other one that's a very, very good one is the 160 that came off the Orange Utility that originally came from Norm, from the Outdoor King Forum. So I'm using that on a daily. So lots of this is about parts about getting all this stuff electroplated um, to give it sort of corrosion resistance. There is some corrosion damage on some parts and there are some other parts that we just can't use because they're no good. But in saying that, I hope you enjoy. Just pulling a couple of these 160s apart to have a look. The one that ran right is this one. The, the fuel stinks in the car, but it's obviously got some off fuel and I'm about to take the head off and have a bit of a look. This first one that was in the one that was marked Commodore has had a, a very hard life. It's got broken fins all over the place. If you look there. The crank itself, look, there's a little bit of side movement, but there's no up and down. So that part looks right, but the piston and barrel are naked. They're absolutely munted. Have a look at this. I don't know if you can see in there. This thing's been cooked or run on straight fuel with no oil in it. Can you see, where's the lens over here, I'll have a light there, whoa, sorry, it is so knackered, you can get your fingernails all into that, particularly in that area there, it's very rough, um, you've got no hope of honing that out, uh, the piston is knackered, it looks to me like they haven't put oil in it, um, it's just sort of cooked up and started scraping away. So, <clears throat> that being said, the, the rest of it doesn't look too bad. I mean, if I could find a barrel, I'm going to put a new piston in anyway. But if I could find a barrel for it, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, I'm just sort of pulling bits and pieces off, just having a look. This one ran quite well. Um, and I'll give it the, um, which way is this going? Wait. I'll give it the, um, what do you call it? The electronic ignition and all this stuff. I might use this one in my daily. Just give it a clean because it looks pretty knackered. That doesn't sound good. The one that came out of the stuffed one though. Maybe I'll use that one instead. Maybe that's why it ran a bit funny to begin with. Who knows? And who cares? I don't even recall tightening that up. Anyway, look, um, I just thought while I'm at it, you know what I mean, like, why not? We undo in a crisscross pattern. And I want a 160 for the everyday stuff. I just do. I think, um, this is unusual actually. I, I think it'd be better for what I want to do. This one has a decompressor, but also G3 carby. I thought the G3 came in, or the thing that came in later, but I'm not really all that familiar. This whole stud's going to withdraw. Hmm. Are the crankcases the same? What year is this? 74? I think that's what that means. So this is sort of... I think the motor in mine was 76. Anyway, we'll, we'll pull it apart. This one I'm hoping is good. It certainly ran alright, but I I think it's 
prudent. If you're going to start taking that off, the flywheel off to check the electronic ignition, you're taking the barrel off, it's no extra work to split the crankcase and just check out the bearings. Pretty grotty in there, but eh, not too bad. That looks fairly good though. Oh, that does look good. Where's the shit side? Over here. Oh, that's fine. Uh, in fact, this one would probably benefit from... Um, I should really wash it before I take the barrel off, shouldn't I? Oh, well. I'm going to pull the whole thing apart anyway, so what the hell? What the hell? And if I put bearings in, I will put bearings in. Hydro blasted. It's got a big scratch in it, but aside from that big scratch, I don't think there's a problem. I reckon it's going to be fit for a piston kit. And I will put a piston kit in. There's also a lot of muck in the engine, I can see. This thing clattered when I stopped it. Yeah, it's got a bit of movement there, it's not too bad though. Again, the crank's pretty good. That crank's even better than the other one. And... Doesn't need a piston or not? It probably doesn't even need a piston. I think I can reuse that piston. Yeah. Oh, look, that's pretty good news. There's, you know, I've certainly got a cylinder I can use. It has got a scrape in it. Down here, in there, I can feel it. But I don't think it's worth sacrificing it just for that. I might get that hydroblasted, actually. Just really clean it up and see what they say because I don't reckon that's bad at all it's just dirty but we're going to pull it apart anyway give it a good clean and see what we've got the humble decompressor this one's not too bad you push the pin till in stick your finger over there and it stays in you let the vacuum go and it goes off uh, very easy to get into if I can find my screwdriver where did I put it? it must be in this one tools here. Right. I'm just going to take them off like that and put my finger over the end and those clips will come off. It'll come apart then. Sometimes it won't, um, in which case you would get a razor blade between that steel plate and the bottom. This one's coming off so it's all good. There's a large spring in there and then you've got the guts of it. The diaphragm. Uh, there's a spring behind here and you have to push that clip down and move it out to relieve it. Like that. Then the spring will come out, the pintle will drop out. There's a gasket, there's a steel tray behind the diaphragm, a washer either side of it, and there's a, a filter which somebody's replaced. And that's the body with a gasket on it, like a spark plug gasket. Very, very easy. Now, one of the engines, two of the engines are very, very good. You can see here, that's got a beautiful seat on it, which corresponds to that there. So by all intents and purposes, that seems to be absolutely fine. Okay, so looking at these engines, it's got loads of them in bits now. These two are the only two I'm absolutely not going to touch. This is the 125 off the rubbish pile that was in the Mayfair. It still has its own pattern inside. It looks perfect, the sides of the piston and also on the bore, you can see the bore in through the inlet and the exhaust port. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it and pulling it apart would be silly. So, and the same with this 160. This is the one out of the utility, the orange utility that I got from Norm. Um, this is perfect. That's absolutely fine. So I did end up, because this one blew a lot of smoke, I ended up taking the barrel off. The barrel and the head are stuck together, so it didn't upset the head gasket, but I took it off and it's perfect. There was a whole lot of unburnt um, fuel oil mix in the crankcase. So these two are great. I'm not touching them. The rest of them do need some attention. Um, this one here, this piston here, is from the gold one I got from Peter Taylor. It's a good runner. That is resurrectable. There's nothing wrong with that. There's not much clearance in the lands. I think that's fine. And it wasn't rocking around on the crank or anything. So I can reuse that piston. There's nothing wrong with that. 
A new piston kit for 160 is about $34, and that includes rings and pins and all that sort of rings and what do you call it, gudgeon pin and circlips and all that sort of stuff. So I'll, I'll get two kits. Um, one for Norm's silver grey mower. That one ran very, very well, but the ball was scratched up. Uh, that's the piston from that one there. And it's just a little bit too hammered for my liking. That's out of that silver grey one. So we'll change that one over. And the last of the 160s, I think I mentioned before, is this one here. And that one's got a really bad bore in it and a really badly damaged piston. So that one will become a spare parts thing. Um, although the cases are in very good condition and the crankshaft's in very good condition, it might be worth either boring it, which I don't really want to do, or finding another barrel that's, you know, in better condition. This is off the Contessa, which was a kind of a trashy freebie mower. Um, this is a 125 engine, so I'm sort of keen to see if I can reuse pistons or anything out of it. Or, for that matter, if I can just use it, period. But, um, I like, I actually prefer the heads that don't have the decompressor. So I'll build a, a couple, I'll get a couple of, um, I might get three or four decompressor um, kits. Well, I'll give it one thing, it's friggin' filthy. Look at that. Uh, what have we got? Wow, we got a peachy gore. What's it like on the exhaust side? That'll be, the, that'll be Oh, wow, that is. That's mint. A slight ridge, I guess, but that's a good one. That's a really good one. Who'd have thought? God, it looks crummy. You can never judge a book by its cover though. This is another one that's got a lot of this movement. I can feel that. It's about equivalent of the one I had that I pulled apart that started all this stuff. Yeah, it's not great. Um, but I don't know where and there's a bit of damage there too. Are the rings free? The rings are stuck in. So it's probably been cooked up. Yeah, they welded themselves in. I don't know. <laughs> We've just freed them up. There is damage on them though. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I've got to try... Oh, I might take the piston off. Just so it's not flapping around. But, you know, at a pinch, I could, um, the funny part about these things is they run when they're probably not even supposed to. I've heard all sorts of stories about them being sort of operable. Whoops, hang on, I'm just going to get this pin out. When they're really, they defy odds, you know what I mean? What I'm curious about is if the wear is in the bush. I think the wear might be in the bush. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, the wear's in the bush. I wonder if I can just press another bush onto it. That's pretty slack. Doesn't seem to be too bad in the piston, though. The other piston was knackered. You could probably... kind of wet sand that out. <laughs> if you're a butcher, like me. And the rings, oh gosh, look at these rings. Look at how the wear's on this. Look how thin they are. They're really thin through there. But in saying that, there's bugger all clearance in there. I mean, it's all carboned up and pretty grotty, but that's another one we can sort of look at and maybe decide on later. Let's take some bearings and stuff. There's two, there's three bearings in these. There's a little 125. It's not been hydroblasted, but it's been cleaned. Um, these ones here, the smaller of the bearings, goes in the bottom. And the other two sit intermediate. So this one's going to go in there. No, it goes in the bottom. So it's going in there. There's a difference in these cases. 
Some use a 6204 or 6203, sorry, and others use a 6004 for the lower bearing. I went to put the new ones in, which are the same as that, and it just shakes around, but that fits that one. So this one, which is in great condition, can just go back in there. So I'll just give that a bit of a, a tappy tap. Thunder. Um, that's it. And then we can use one of these other ones. Now, when you get these bearings, the these ones, some of them have a, um, a set of seals in them. Now we can't leave those in. They're a sealed bearing. We can't leave those in because that will stop any lubrication getting to that lower bearing. But the kick with these is these just click out. Whoops. Like that. And they just click in again. So it's quite a, a good thing. Whatever the case, we won't use them. We'll get rid of them. But I'll blow those out. I'll get the grease out of there. And just when I put it together, I'll oil it up. So we can just take those out and you can flush them out with brake clean or whatever you want. I think I had a spacer in there. Some of them do, some of them don't. So I'll just tap him there. But the tone changes and that way you know it's in. Now the seal, let me dust this off. The seal fits in, into there, and where's my seal? And they're the, these bigger ones, the 20 mil. They go in like that. There's, there's two seals, and we just put a bit of grease in there and push it in. I'm going to use a little bit of 3-bond around the perimeter. Just to help it slide in. Yeah, get the lid off. Whoops. This is the equivalent of Honda Bond. Same sort of thing. And theoretically speaking, it's not necessary. But it will help the seal go in. Let's just finish it off with the socket. Now this seal goes in from the inside. There are two. There's the 6204 and there's also a smaller seal that goes in there. Let me get rid of some of this crap. I think it's pretty good practice just to replace all the seals. I don't think it's being overzealous or cautious or anything. I just think it's a good idea. And we just want to lubricate these seals before I put this bearing in anyway. And also the one in the bottom housing. Which is a bit of power. And our cranky. Like that. And that's cool. I don't think it goes in any further than that. It is sitting oh, maybe 30 thousandths above that level. Hey, what weather! Um, I'm just going to put a bit of this around the crankcase. We use this on motorcycles. Um, they call it Honda Bond. It's just a 3 Bond 1104. Really good stuff. Um, Honda repackaging. I think Yamaha and Suzuki do too. There's Yami Bond and maybe it's Kawasaki, I can't remember, but a lot of people use this stuff because it's just so good. It's about $17 a tube, worth every cent.
We've cleaned up those surfaces there. Hang on a minute. Let's make sure they're clean. We can wash them down with thinner or whatever. Yeah, just stick that on and there. I've got see I've got grease around there. Maybe a tiny bit more, hey? Put these bolts in. I'll start with opposites first. Whack some nuts on and nip it up. So that can sit and wait until I've cleaned cylinders and all that, then I can put all that on and that sort of thing. So that'll do for now. I'll put it away and we'll do something else. Well, I fixed up a couple of tables. That's the old top from this one, which I narrowed off. It's been there for 10 or 15 years or so and I've put this new top on full of a whole lot of hydroglassing I want to talk about at the moment just yellow tongue with some cover strap and it gives me more of a storage uh, display work area same with this one here um, same deal I've just got to clear this just stick a bit of CFP on it underneath it's a motorcycle and there's no leg on this side so it's quite rigid but I will run a pole um, or a chain up to the um, Perlin and that will support it nicely. So let's talk about this hydroblasting stuff and We'll go from there All right, Some hydroblasting. That's only a little bit of it. So let's have a chat. First, We'll have a cup of tea Now the state of this 18 stuff was such that you couldn't clean it by hand Well, you could but it wouldn't look nearly as good um, Hydroblasting is very gentle I've said it before, waterborne glass shot. Um, you can't avoid where the corrosion's been, but most of these parts are in impeccable condition and just perfect. I, I see nothing wrong with that. The other thing with it is it's a lot gentler. You can't sandblast aluminium, you'll ruin it. Even sheet metal, I think it ruins it. Um, it is good for things like rusty handlebars uh, that are going to be powder coated, which is what I've done with the rest of the stuff. It's all at the powder coaters, all the handlebars and everything except one set, which are off Norm's grey and silver mail, which I bought and disassembled. The cylinder covers, side covers turned up. I'm missing one of those. I don't know what to do with it, so I'll just get another one out of the bounty and get that done as well. Of course, the exhaust. I was mystified about those things. I now know what they are. I will um, not use this one. I'll get another one of them done as well. The pulley, of course, and handlebar supports and all that sort of stuff. There is a mammoth amount of stuff at the electroplaters at the moment. I've taken three loads, and that will some of it or most of it comes back tomorrow. If you look at the work on the cylinder head, have fun cleaning one up as well as that. It just looks absolutely lovely. The only problem with the 18 that I can see well, there's two problems I'll tell you about. One is that the cylinder needs a bore. Um, there's some rough markings halfway down which is stopping putting it back together for now. The exhaust came up well. What I'm not that happy with is the base. Now I've got two bases. This was the first one I sent away and it's very scratched from where someone's mechanically removed um, paint in the past. There's also a bit of snot still in there, but it's not too bad. Um, given that it's 60 years old or so, I've taken the other one today to get done. I'm not very happy with that. Um, no fault of the hydroblaster, it's just a little bit too far gone. So we've got eight we're doing, the 18 sort of a, a standalone, and the other one that's a standalone is the daily, which is that bronzy coloured one down there. This is not a great base. This is the one that was cracked up, and it's messy, and I don't care, because that's going to be the thing that I do the lawns with, and I need to get this done fairly quickly, because I need doing again. That one there will get... Um, a dirty set of wheels <laughs> um, I'm not fussed about them I will clean them, I'll drop them in some um, it'll probably clean up alright actually I'll drop them in some um, detergent in a bucket let them soak and you know, put them on now, there's a difference there's this, this is an old wheel 
that would probably be off this one here which we're about to talk about and that's how well they come up when John sticks them in his bath. It's very cheap to get done. I've got a whole bunch of those getting done at the moment but as an indication the only marks on them are where I left them on the table which has got dust on but they're absolutely lovely and so I will get them all cleaned up like that. Three of the moles will have tops like this. This is off this one here which is the Mayfair from the rubbish pile. It has the longer tail in the back for the 125 engine. These all need to be edge primed. Um, they are soaked in a water solution as a rust preventative but it's only temporary so you just get a bit of prep wash wipe it off edge prime them quickly and then they're nice and good to go this will need a little bit of body fill just to keep filling some of those pits this one will be a gold color but i'm not doing hammer tone which i would quite like to do but the reason i'm not doing it uh, is because i can't put a clear over it or at least i don't know what clear to use one of the other tops has a larger front or an open front with a larger fuel tank we'll use that one too that was a 160 originally and this is the other 125 one which is slightly worse than what came off that and again a skimmer fill will do that justice that was also a 160 engine as well the machines that don't have a steel top will have a plastic top and they're all reliant on these things um, little fan shrouds and again I think there's a difference with G3 carbureted ones and with governors on them and the other ones, the later G4, I'm not sure. Um, some of them are different. You can see that one has an extension at the back. I need to figure that. That might be a 160, that might be a 125. I'm not terribly sure. Um, hang on. Yeah. Hold on, And then there's this one as well, which is another 125, I'm quite sure. The cutting discs. Again, hydroblasts, and the reason for that is I want to have a good look at them to make sure there's no cracks. I found one with cracks, no good, that goes straight in the bin. This is off this machine from the rubbish pile as well. Still has all its Victor markings and part numbers. It's in outstanding condition. These will just get a rattle can silver coat in enamel just to stop them corroding. Of course, I've got three of them here. Another one, slightly newer, uh, with the, um, the, different, the more modern type of bolts that hold the blades on. So there's that one there. And of course, the one that came off the daily machine, which is going back on there, um, that is a four blade type as well. So there's that. I've got another three of these ones of the much more modern type. They are yet to be cleaned up. I will need another one of these. I do have one where the bolts are broken off. And it's just easier. I could weld other nuts on, but then they use a specific type of um, fastener there so I'd sooner just get another one of those if I can. All exhaust retainers, I'm missing one of these for a torpedo type muffler that came off this machine. Um, the other torpedo mufflers have clamps around them, I've got two of them so there's three torpedoes all told. I do prefer those even though the base is different. So these ones are all designed to exhaust out through the base. This one was originally designed for a torpedo. I've got the all the clamps here for the box type mufflers. I that suit this type. I, I don't find them nearly as sort of attractive. Um, these will all get just high heat paint. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to electroplate these. Uh, they do stand a chance of becoming brittle if there's hydrogen embrittlement. They'll snap. Um, but once they're heat treated, they shouldn't. But all the same, I'm not going to bother from plating those anyway. Um, various um, deflectors, if you like, they go on the inside of the base. They use a rivet. Um, one gentleman suggested stainless rivets, and that is true. Um, I'm going to put aluminium ones in just because it's easier. Uh, so that's an aluminium one, so it doesn't need to be plated. The rest of them are being plated at the moment. Cylinder heads for the 160s. These are all decompressor type. Absolutely beautiful. All the markings there, part numbers, everything. And really smooth and lovely in the combustion chamber. I've had two of those done. We're rebuilding two 160s. The third 160 is in very good condition. I've pulled it apart, had a look at it. It doesn't need anything and it's going on the generic every day. So two 160s need to be rebuilt with new piston kits and I've got to split the cases and have a look at the, the bearings, but that's a nothing anyway. These two bases here, that one is the silver gray one from Norm. It's got some guys um, stamped his name in there. We'll fill over that. We'll fill in these two dings. 
It's got some celastic stuff there that didn't come off. I've got to have a look at that. Um, and again, edge primed. And the same with this one. Now, there's three different castings here, which are quite interesting. The early Honda CB750s, um, I have restored a 78 one, or I'm nearly finished restoring it. Um, the early Sandcast ones from 1969s are worth a lot of money. I saw one advertised for 65. Normally, you don't see them any cheaper than about $40,000. Now, these are all smooth castings. These are later ones. That is quite rough, and I'm wondering if that's a Sandcast one, um, being an earlier model. But it's not that early. It's 1969. This is the one from the rubbish pile I keep talking about. I know the history of that. It was owned by the chap next door and he threw it out. He got it from his father who bought it new in South Australia back in 1969. It's in, it's the best one I've got. It's really in, in impeccable condition. Uh, we'll turn them around and have a look underneath. This is the worst of the three excellent ones. There's a small pinhole there. There's two pinholes where debris has been allowed to sit underneath that front axle. And of course, eventually has eaten its way through. Grass clippings are very, very acidic. The thing about it is though, a bit of JB Well will fill that up beautifully. We can paint underneath it. There's still a bit of crap there that he didn't see, but that doesn't matter, I can get rid of that as well. This is the second one, much the same condition, very pitted there. There's no holes going through. This was the silver one from Norm. And of course, in that area there, there's a little bit of, looks like delamination. I don't know what that's from, but we'll fill that in with a, a nice two part um, adhesive and there's a small hole there as well doesn't go through but it is what it is you can see the way they're cast along here along this line the um, one from the neighbors is actually can we see if I just turn this one over you can see where they've mechanically grounded off at the factory that's not a repair but pardon me, it is a different casting as I said before this is the best that I've got um, there's mild pitting, not too much. A couple of little dings where it's hit stones and so forth. But the walls are in very, very good condition. Um, so that's a peach, that one. It's an absolutely beautiful machine. So the differences in them aren't just about um, how they're cast. Although that's got the line there. Maybe they used to cast them to the line on top. I don't know. But they've done something different as far as the casting is concerned. I'm not sure how they did it. Earlier machines, um, you can see markings there that aren't present in this one, such as these ribs here. And of course, differences in how it's finished up as well. But I don't think any of that matters. Once it's got some etch on, I think it's going to be fine. This one here is different again, and it's got these embossed stripes. Someone thought that was a Monaro, um, a Victor Monaro. I'm a bit opposed to sticking a Monaro sticker on it. It's like putting a Falcon GT sticker on a mower. I just don't think it's, I think it's kind of silly. Um, just an opinion, really. I can understand Contessa and, you know, Utility and all that sort of stuff. I can understand names like that, but when you start getting into Monaros and that sort of thing, I'm, I don't know, I'm not so sure. Um, but anyway, look, that's the three bases. There's another three at the Blasters right now. They're the two worst of this style of base, and there's also the other 18 base, which I wasn't very happy with. I think I've taken about 20 wheels there, or 16 wheels or something. Uh, a couple of other cylinder heads. I haven't taken the barrels yet. And it's full of bits and pieces from the different models. There's some stuff that needs to be cleaned. There's a stainless bucket there, which is going to get some wonderful morning fresh. And then, of course, we'll soak those wheels there for our daily, because they don't need to be cleaned up terribly much. So there's a 160 there from the utility. That's having a powder-coated orange base at the moment. Um, that is going on the daily. This is the 125 from the neighbor's machine, which is going straight back on after a cleanup. And of course the carburetor with it and all this sort of other stuff. Some 18 stuff there. Still getting through it all. But that's about the size we're up to for the moment. We've also got to fix up that husky... Where is it? See that? Husky leaf blower. I've ordered a coil and a fuel line kit for it as well. And that doesn't belong to me. That's a friend. So I'll fix that quickly. And then we can get back into this. Right, stuck a coat down on that one. And also over there. I've coated that one. But for now, I just want to throw these wheels in. They're later Victor ones. And just let them soak. In some hot water and detergent. And then we'll get a brush, a toothbrush or something, see how they clean up. It's hot actually, but that these look like they're going to be fine. I think John's solution's better, but... Um, Maybe a toothbrush or something on there. 
So I'll clean up all right. Oh, well, we'll just let them soak. Well, I don't want any of this tinware to rust, um, given that they've been all sort of professionally cleaned. This is a semi-clean shirt, I think. <laughs> so I'm just going to use a bit of prep sole, mainly on the underside, and just get any of that water-based um, rust preventative off. Whoops, I want it to be on, you know, nice clean metal. There will be a bit of pitting and so forth, but I'm not too fussed about that because I intend to um, make a little bit of fill. We'll just go underneath in here. I'm not going to get too carried away, even though this whole project of doing... I'll call it seven and a half mowers because I'm not really planning on finishing the 18 yet, but whatever the case, the fact we're doing so many of them, you know, it is low value, low budget stuff. This is your single package. You can get it in rattle cans for about $17. I always buy it in a, um, a tin like this, it's $28.50. I've had this tin for a little while, so it might be a little bit more now, but I doubt it. Um, when you get it, it's quite thick, but you need to reduce it quite a lot. I'm just going to stick some in here. I'm going to paint on the driveway. I'm just going to stick about that much in, about there. I always knock nails in the edge of the can, and that way the paint doesn't sit in the lip, it just drains back into the can. Um, some people are critical of that, saying it'll make the paint go off, but I've had paint for 20 years in cans and they're still fine. This is GP thinner. GP for general purpose. Well, uh oh, that's not good for the drive. And I'm going to reduce this quite a lot. So when you shoot it, it really needs to be quite watery. Even that is probably too thick. I might just stick a tiny bit more thinner in. I'm getting paint everywhere and I should be on a piece of cardboard, but I'm not, so there you have it. Right. That should be fine. Hopefully the wind's not bothering you. Right, so we're going to load our gun. I'm just using a touch-up now. Should be right. And we shoot it. I want to start upside down. I might do it this way actually, I'm going to try and get into all those nooks and crannies. This one's a bit easier because it's got the larger engine. But that's basically it. Connect an airline and we're just going to shoot it in. Now you don't want this stuff too thick. It's got um, the capability to not be as effective if it's too thick. So it's really quite watery, what I'm doing here. You can even turn the nozzle down so you get a nice straight... Is that the way you go? Yeah. It makes it easier to sort of get into some of these areas here which is only really prevalent on the 125. So I'm just going to get into those corners. And look it's not perfectly necessary. Most people when they do this sort of thing just use rattle cans but rattle cans are good but I don't really want to use them if I'm going to be painting this stuff and stuff. Hard to get in when you've got too many things. I can't be really getting the other store horse out of the shed with the other couple of them. A bit of this one just blew off, you can see it there. Right, I think that's enough for 
etch priming those. I'm not body working these bits because they don't need it. Yeah. I'll just take the other bits quickly. I got some electroplating back. Uh, rear axles, this one's a bit daggy here, it's been rusted. That one, that whole part's been removed from. That was the original one from my daily mower. Uh, this one, of course, the handle's broken off and somebody had screwed that on. We can reattach that, that's not a problem. Um, so they'll all be fine. I'm not worried about them. The actual condition themselves is pretty good. The catcher rods, one of them was I had to destroy to get it off, so I can turn another one on a lathe. That's pretty easy. Same sort of deal. We've got the six of them. The best ones will go on the um, the good mowers, and the probably the worst one would be this one. It's pretty well knackered. That will go on my daily. Um, it's 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 rough looking, but it'll stay intact. I'm fairly confident. The adjuster rods. Adjuster rods are here. This one here is the one I didn't get done um, on the premise that it's all sort of chewed out. So I'm going to just weld that up on both sides. Um, there's nothing much I can do. The rest of them are intact, although one hasn't got provision for a spring. That one's sort of bare on both sides, but that doesn't worry me at all. Various containers and bits and pieces. I plated everything. That's a very spring retainer. All these star washers. Oh yeah, springs, they were amazingly um, corroded and knackered, including your fuel tank straps on the steel top mowers. And what have we got? Catcher springs as well. So they're all done. These throttles came up beautifully. Um, these are sort of old school throttles. 160 head studs, um, fuel tank brackets. There's a whole lot of other stuff. Some of these are no good. They're just too thin and razor sharp on that edge there. So you can get ones of these. I'll order a couple of them. But, you know, on the whole, they use straps for your tanks. I ended up just getting everything done. And the bolts for the um, zip starter or the plastic tops. Uh, what else? Oh, these. These kind of well decompressors, although some plastics can go through the, pro the process of electroplating with no negative result. I have melted these. So I'm going to have to try and get new ones of those or make something out of Delrin, I'm not sure. But that gives you some idea of what's here. There's another three strings, I think, or four strings to pick up, as well as uh, a few other bits and pieces, which were in a box that I'd forgotten about. I obviously won't be doing that one because I need to use it, but yeah, these sort of bits, carburetor brackets and that sort of thing. There's a bunch of those for G3s and all sorts of other stuff. So... That stuff all needs to get done still. There's not much left. I'll go through the boxes to make sure I've got it all. Right, well, we've got two coats on here. I don't like this yellow tongue nearly as, as much as this stuff here. That's the old stuff. I did this a couple of years ago and it's nice and shiny and very easy to keep clean. Um, I've got this, this, this sort of continues up under here. It's just a work area, which is why it's so messy on a, on a laminate. But this stuff isn't nearly as nice. It seems to... It's a bit flatter, if you know what I mean, but it doesn't matter. It's just a, a workbench sort of thing. Um, it's nicely braced. I don't know if you can see under there. It's all sort of braced up and everything. I do have to... I've put. I've triangulated that corner there. Um, I do have to work out some sort of pole or whatever to go up to the roof. But, you know, once that goes off, I can start laying stuff out. It's going to be a lot easier to sort of be organised and that sort of stuff, particularly with painted parts. But anyway, look, that's all I've got at the moment. Hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves. And I'll see you soon.
What do you reckon? Shit. Shit. Scared them. Oh, I took some good video clips of them too. Oh, she just hit butted us. Is this free music? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely free. <laughs> That's a Rex. She's got really tough hair. Abyssinian. I don't think she trusts me. Well, this anyway. is her first time being outside. 